be these guys over here, this range. And then hit enter. So we could have typed that C5 colon C13. And notice the highest number here is the number 500. If I change one of those numbers to 788 and hit enter, notice this will be updated automatically as well. All of these other references as well to it. So for example, this got changed, this number here and that, and also the total back here. Now, if I wanted to find the minimum, the lowest number, then you do the same thing. So you do equal, and then you try, for example, minimum, M-I-N. And notice the first one that gets recommended from Microsoft is M-I-N. So those actually you kind of have to remember them. It works the same in OpenOffice and the other applications as well. So we choose M-I-N. Notice it's doing the parentheses. And then we select the range. We want to find the lowest number in this range. Then hit Enter. And the lowest number is number 13. Now you say, what about the average? What's the average of all these numbers here? So for the average, you just uh, do again equal sign. And then you type average. Or you start typing part of the average. Notice it's not a short way like AVG. So in this case, it is the whole word. It gives you the average or the arithmetic mean of its arguments or of the numbers that are included in the range. For example, this would be the range right here. Then we hit enter. And that is the average. Now, what about counting them? So you do the equal sign, count. By the way, for any of those, instead of doing them manually, you could go to the Home tab. So let's go back here under the Home tab. And there is this section right here under the Editing option. And you choose drop down here, and then you choose Count Numbers. That's another function. But I'd like to have you use it manually to understand the concept behind it, because those menus, again, could change. So if we click on Count Numbers here, Notice it's going to try to count these numbers automatically right here. But we are not interested in those. We are interested in those from 5 through 13, C5 through C13. We select the new range, hit Enter, and notice there are nine numbers included in there, nine records. So instead of you counting those manually, you'd count them using a formula. So now the question is, how can I have these, instead of me spending all afternoon or day entering these formulas for the other ranges, and you could have hundreds of those, how can I replicate these numbers so that they actually, or those formulas here, how can I replicate those formulas so that what I have in this here, it would also be the same on these other columns? So the way to do that, if you remember before, when we did this, we just dragged it to the right. So we could simply do this first one. Notice this is the formula up here we could drag it to the right. And it works. Now, by the way, anytime you drag this stuff to the right, you need to verify that the correct uh, stuff is being calculated, the correct formula. So if you click on the formula bar up here, notice it selects, it tells you in blue what's being selected. So that's one of the ways. So you can click on it, drag it to the right. Now, another way to do this easier is select the whole range here, a whole bunch of stuff, and then click on the bottom right, and then drag it to the right. And now notice it does it for all the records in the spreadsheet, or in that range that we are picking. So what's happening is, as you drag it to the right, notice on the first one, it's C5 through C13. When we click on the next one, it's D5 through D13. So it's shifting one over in a sequence, very similar to like the days of the week that we tried earlier and the months of the year, and so on. So that's relative referencing. So that's um, some of the basic uh, functions here that we learned so far, is to add a bunch of numbers. So to find the total for a bunch of numbers, or the sum of, of the total num uh, bunch of numbers. To find the highest number, maximum. Minimum number, the lowest number. The average, and counting. So it's just five functions so far. Now, a lot of times in business, you also do um, other mathematical calculations, such as addition. 
subtracting numbers, multiplying a bunch of numbers, and then dividing. So addition in Excel, it's represented usually uh, by using the sum uh, function, sum or the plus sign. So you could have a bunch of a uh, couple numbers within parentheses, and you use a plus between those two references. And we tried the, so I'd recommend that you use the sum function for that, just like we did over here. Subtraction, it's usually uh, just the minus sign on the keyboard. Multiplication, it's um, the asterisk, the shift and seven in Windows PC. Actually, it's shift and number eight in Windows PC. And then dividing, it's by a slash, represented by just simply typing a slash here. So, in our case here, we have an, another example. Let's say that we have these employees. This is their pay. They, they have to pay different deductions. Deduction number one, deductions number two. So now we want to calculate the total of those deductions. So we have uh, deduction one and deduction two, and that will give us the total of these deductions. So what we do here is we press the equal sign, and then we put sum open parentheses, and then just pick those two cells. Hit enter, and it is $289, for example. Now, in this case, you'd say, well, why didn't I do the equal sign or the plus sign here? The reason why you don't want to do the plus sign is because at some point between deduction one and deduction two, you might insert a new column, and then whatever that new column that you insert is going to be part of your new range. So now what you do is, notice there is also a warning here that says the formula in this cell refers to a range that is additional adjacent to it. So it's basically saying, hey, you might have forgotten to include this one over here. But we're not interested in that because it's we're doing something else at this point. We just want to add the deductions. So now if you wanted to add all of these deductions together, all you do is you use the autofill feature. And actually, that's not adding them together. It's basically uh, replicating that same formula in the other cells. So again, I click on it, and I drag it down. And notice those have been represented. So that for this guy that is making $9,000 uh, a month, he has to pay $693 in deductions. Now, if we wanted to figure out what his net pay is, what we would do here is that um, we need to basically take his gross pay minus the deductions. So what we do in this case is the equal sign, and then we choose the payment minus the deductions. And then we hit Enter. So again, what we did, equal sign, the first number, first value, the total pay, minus the deductions. And then we can replicate this using the autofill feature. So the net pay for Bill is, instead of getting $9,000, he's actually getting only $8,375. So now, what we'll do is, let's say we want to figure out the annual income for him, or for any of those employees. So what we do is, uh, let's say we want to figure out the annual uh, net pay. Usually it's the gross pay that you calculate, but let's say for now we want to include the, the annual one. So the annual would be the monthly times 12. So the way you put that in a formula is the equal sign, this number, the net pay, times 12. Usually it's not recommended that you you encode in a formula actual numbers. However, for this is the month of the year, so this is a round number, and it's most likely not going to change, but usually, keep in mind, you reference something. So it would be very similar to like saying annual. And then in another cell here, you say it's going to be 12. So what you do in this case, instead of 12, you change that to be this value, L20. And if I hit enter, I still get the same value. So now let's drag this down to 